Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. And in this video, as you guys already know, we're going to be um, auditioning a lot of different effects in Audacity. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and listen how uh, the track sounds like without any effect. And then we're going to start uh, auditioning effects so that we can understand what they're all about. So let's go ahead and begin. So we're pretty familiar how that sounds like <laughs> and believe me we're going to hear it a lot more times throughout this uh this video but uh let's go ahead and start uh applying some effect so the first one we're going to check out is going to be amplify essentially what this is going to do is just change the dynamics either by raising or lowering um the dynamics by using the slider right here uh, what i recommend is that you go in small increments and definitely uh, stray away from going very high because you can do a lot of damage to, uh, of course, your hearing, the speakers that you're using, uh, headphones, and of course, even your sound card. You can blow it out. So um, I recommend you going in very small steps. Uh, for this example, we're going to go ahead and uh, just lower the amplification, just to keep things safe. I'm going to hit preview and we'll hear how it sounds. So as you can tell, it was noticeably lower. So let's go ahead and hit uh, cancel. We'll move on to our next effect. The next one we have here is called auto duck. The way this works is essentially you need to have an additional tracks already set up uh, for the auto duck. Uh, they're pretty much sort of like paired together. And essentially the way this works is it's gonna be like automation of sound. Uh, so you can go ahead and use your uh, draw tool, your pencil tool right here to um, pretty much set an automation of the volume. Uh, let's go ahead and hit OK and move on to our next effect. Next what we have here is uh, bass and treble. This is effectively going to uh, either boost or reduce any bass or treble that you want to. Uh, and you can also uh, set the amount right here by using the gain. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll raise a little bit. We'll take these down. And probably even so, we're not going to hear that big of a difference, uh, but we'll hit preview and uh, see what's up. So not such a big uh, difference, but there was a difference. Uh, you probably heard it a little bit better if you're wearing headphones. Um, but yeah, uh, this is another effect that's in here. Let's go ahead and hit cancel and move on to our next effect. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here. It says change pitch and it'll do exactly that. Um, essentially you could uh, either raise or uh, lower the uh, semitones to give you a different pitch effect. Uh, so let's go ahead and raise it. Let's, let's see if we can do a nice, uh, a nice even number. We'll do six. And it should be fine, we'll hit okay. and we'll hear how this sounds. So the more that you actually uh, raise or lower this effect, the more noticeable you'll hear like artifacting and things like that. Of course, it will change the pitch, uh, but uh, not, not super well. Uh, it's not going to be like changing the pitch, let's say, like in Pro Tools, which will, you know, really smoothen it out and make it sound uh, the way you want it to sound. Uh, you'll have a lot less artifacts. And of course, if you're in our recording program, you definitely already know that you're going to get Pro Tools. If you aren't in our recording program, I definitely recommend that you uh, take a look at the website and see what we have to offer uh, because we're really only uh, skimming the surface of what uh, recording engineering is about, especially with using Audacity. Uh, but it's still a really great program and it's still a lot of fun to use. Uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and undo that last function that I made. Let's see if it actually do it. That did it. It says uh, redo change pitch now. Okay, so yeah, it effectively uh, yeah, it changed it back. Let's go ahead and uh, move to our next effect, which is change speed. Now, uh, change speed is also pretty interesting because when you change the speed, you're also effectively changing the pitch as well. Uh, there's other options, you know, in, in the effects area that will allow you to uh, change the speed without affecting the pitch. Uh, but let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. It's basically going to give us that um, kind of record player uh, effect. 
So we'll hit preview. I'm actually going to lower it, hit preview. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting effect. I mean, um, what I like about it is maybe using it for like either intros or outros or something like that. Um, you know, you select a specific area and, uh, you know, you give it a world, see if it works for it. Um, you know, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but it's just another effect in Audacity. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. We'll move on to our next effect. Now what we have here is something that's called changing tempo or change tempo. Uh, this is actually a pretty useful tool. Uh, again, it's a really fun effect as well. Essentially you can change the tempo or the BPM of the song without affecting the pitch. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this a try. We'll hear how it sounds. So as you can tell, it did actually uh, slow down the tempo of the song, but at a cost again, um, there was some artifacting there and you could definitely uh, hear that there. I mean, usually the uh, smaller the percent change is, the less noticeable it will be. So uh, that's just kind of like a rule of thumb there. Let's go ahead and hit cancel and we'll move on to our next effect. So next what we have here is something called click removal. Uh, this is actually a pretty useful tool right here, especially if you have, let's say, like a crackling uh, input or output on an instrument, like, let's say like a guitar or something like that. Maybe uh, you're sitting down and recording and um, you have kind of like a faulty input or output. Essentially, you could remove those clicks and pops by using uh, these sliders right here and adjusting to uh, what seems best. Now, this is not going to be very effective since there isn't any clicks or pops uh, in this recording right here. So we're, I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel and we'll move on to our next effect. So next what we have here is the compressor. Uh, we're not really going to go uh, too in depth about you know what a compressor is and what it does. Essentially if you're in the recording uh, connection program you learn all about it in, in the books and with your mentor and in the studio. It's a little bit too in depth to really um, summarize uh, in this uh, video, especially that, you know, this video is probably going to be around, you know, 15 to 20 minutes long. Uh, and if I include exactly how a dy dynamic range compressor is, it probably lasts another, you know, 30 minutes. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and hit cancel and move on to our next effect. So next what we have here is echo. And we're all pretty familiar with what echo does and what it sounds like, but we'll go ahead and hit, uh, go ahead and click it and Get a quick little preview. So uh, that's the echo effect. One thing I kind of would say I don't really like about Audacity too much is that you're not able to, um, you know, hit play and affect these uh, or make uh, changes on the effects in real time. Uh, so there's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, let's go ahead and hit cancel. We'll move on to our next effect. So next what we're going to take a look at is equalization. Um, you have a regular uh, graph view right here. Uh, we have this graphic EQ, which I actually prefer. Uh, you're able to uh, move these sliders up and down. And as you can see, the curves actually appear then. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make some dramatic changes right here uh, in this EQ, uh, just so that we can uh, preview it and hear the notice noticeable change. I'm going to be cutting a lot of things out. Essentially, it's going to sound either like uh, like a telephone or an old record player or something like that. Let's go ahead and preview and hear how it sounds. Uh, so I, I did make some big changes here. It wasn't too dramatic. Let's try it one more time. I'll move some more of these sliders down. Let's see if we can get that. So right there, it did sound like um, it was uh, EQ'd down, and you can definitely hear the, the difference on that one. So let's go ahead and hit cancel, and we'll move on to our next effect. We have fade in. So uh, essentially what this is, is going to basically um, 
start off the amplitude of that track at a very low vo volume, actually pretty much zero volume, and then it's going to bring it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what it sounds like and what it looks like in the arrangement. And as you can tell, this entire track changed. You can see there's absolutely no audio and it raises up. So let's go ahead and start it right around here because it'd be too quiet to even hear any change there. It'd just be really quiet. So as you can tell, it gradually started getting louder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo that function. And let's go ahead and check out the next one, which is fade out. And essentially it works exactly the same way. Instead of uh, actually though, instead of it actually uh, steadily getting louder, it's going to steadily get quieter towards the end. So let's take a listen and a look at how that looks like. So as you can tell at the end of the track, it just got quieter. And I'm going to go ahead and start it off like So it just got quieter. Uh, let's go ahead and undo that function. As you can see, uh, that's a dramatic difference there. Take a look at our next effect. Invert. Now what this is going to do is it's effectively going to invert the wave file. Now this is the last effect that we're going to look at for this part of the video. We're going to continue the rest of them in the next video, but let's go ahead and uh, listen to invert right now. So it's not um, a huge, huge change, but what, essentially what this does too, it's what does really well is uh, help you isolate specific frequencies and sounds uh, within that audio track. Uh, let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. So not a really huge change that you could tell right off the bat, but it's actually really doing some uh, pretty pretty interesting things. And again, this works really well if you're trying to isolate specific frequencies and you're working in tandem with, let's say, uh, EQ or something like that. Uh, definitely uh, pretty fun, kind of one of these experimental effects as well. So we're going to go ahead and pick up on the next effects in the next video. So uh, go ahead and look out for that one. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finance is a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.